Welcome everybody. Here is Ahmed Al Agmi Musa, Senior Cardiology Resident at Zana Cardiac Center, Cottbus in Germany. And today I'm going to talk about uh, comprehensive assessment of the right ventricular function with echocardiography. I hope that you at the end of this presentation will be able to assess the right ventricle as an echo expert how we can assess the right ventricular function. We have many tools that uh, we can use. At first, we have the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion or TAPC, the most commonly used method. A second one is the right ventricular S prime maximal velocity or RV S prime Vmax. The third one is the fractional area change, which is less commonly used. And the third and the fourth one, which I am a big fan of it, is the right ventricular global and free wall strain. Let's begin with the TAPT or tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. T stands for tricuspid, E annular, T plane, S systolic, E excursion. What does this mean? Here is a tricuspid valve. Is, here is an apical four chamber view. I have placed the cursor over the tricuspid annulus and then press the bottom of M mode to create a picture like that. We will see how to get it in the next slide. But tricuspid annulus is here. The right ventricular function depends mainly on the longitudinal function. That means here is the apex of the right ventricle. It is somewhat fixed and the right ventricular function depends on that the base of the right ventricle moves toward the apex. In systole, the base moves toward the apex. So the tricuspid annulus moves from here in systole towards the apex, moves upward. In echo, we, we see the picture ups up, uh, upside down Normally, the base moves downward. Now, according to our image, the tricuspid annulus moves down upward in systole, like here, here is systole, here is diastole. Then we have top and we have a bottom. How can we measure the tapsy? At first, we have to get the epical four chamber view. I have showed in my first presentation how to get this view. You can see it one more time on my channel. Then you have to place the cursor, this dotted line over the tricuspid annulus. And you have to try to keep this line as perpendicular as as much as you can over the tricuspid annulus. Then we press on the M mode button in your machine. M mode, M stands for motion. As here in M mode, we are imaging motion over time. Then you place at first the cursor over the tricuspid annulus, then Press the M mode, you get a picture like this. Looks like a wave. Here is systole, here is diastole. We have top, we have a bottom. When we measure the distance from bottom to top, then we get the tapsy. Here I have measured from bottom to top. Here I have a value of 2.2 or 22 millimeters. 
normal value of TAPSI is more than 17 millimeters. More than 17 is normal, below is abnormal. From 17 to 13, mildly reduced, 13 to 10, moderately reduced, less than 10 is severely reduced. Then, never forget TAPSI is normally more than 17 millimeters. The second tool that we have is the right ventricular S prime C max. How can we get it? We get an epical for chamber view, the same view. We place the cursor here over the tricuspid annulus the same way as in TAPSI. Then instead of pressing the M mode bottom, we press the tissue Doppler bottom. In your machine, you will see a bottom with TDI on it, the tissue Doppler imaging. Then we get a, a picture like that. Here we get two waves, an upward deflection represents the systole and downward deflection represents the diastole. Here is our concern, this systolic wave. We have to measure the peak of this systolic wave. Here I have measured it, the right ventricular S, S stands for systole, Vmax is 11.4 centimeter per second. The normal S prime Vmax is more than 9.5 uh, centimeter per second. A value below 9 is abnormal. Our third tool is the fractional area change. Again, the same view is constant in all our tools. We get an epical four chamber view with slight angulation to get the right ventricle uh, somehow in the middle of the screen. You have to move your probe uh, a little bit laterally in the direction of the anterior axillary line. Here we have a very good view of the right ventricle. Then here we have to freeze the image and we have to measure the area of the right ventricle in diastole. Here diastole, we can know it from the ECG just before the QRS complex or when the tricuspid valve is opened. Here we measure the area. The trabeculation in the right ventricle is a part of the cavity. You don't have to exclude them. Then you have to measure the end diastolic area. Then you have to measure uh, the right ventricular cavity or area in systole here in the T wave. And here the tricuspid valve is closed. When you measure the area in diastole, in diastolic area and in systolic area, you will get RV, right ventricular fractional area change. Here is 45.5%. Normal is more than 35%. That was our third tool. Our fourth one is uh, the strain. We don't all have strain in our machines, but in my hospital, we have a Philips machine. I can do strain analysis. The idea behind strain or longitudinal strain, in strain, we are generally measuring the longitudinal function. Strain uh, 
means shortening or movement. And in uh, assessment of the longitudinal function, we are measuring the extent of shortening. Let's say that uh, the right ventricular wall in diastole is about 10 centimeter long. In systole, the right ventricular wall shortens and it is about eight centimeter long. From 10 to eight, that means that the right ventricular wall has shortened by about 20%. That is the principle behind strain. Here we have to get, in order to measure the right ventricular global uh, or free wall strain, we have to get the same view, the epical four chamber view, here is the same atypical view or slightly angulated view. Then with a bottom click in Phillips is very easy. We have to press the right ventricular auto strain. Then we get a picture like that. Here is a speckle tracking, tracking the right ventricular septum and the right ventricular free wall. Then we get two numbers here, the right ventricular uh, for chamber, longitudinal deformation is about minus 19. Here is the right ventricular free wall is minus 28. Free wall strain means measuring the strain in only the free wall of the right ventricle. Global strain is measuring a mean of strain for the septum and the free wall. You can do it both, have a, but if the patient has problem with the septum, for example, if the patient has ischemic heart disease, septal dyskinesia, or has a pacemaker, or has bundle uh, branch block, right bundle or left bundle branch block, I prefer to do only the right ventricular uh, free wall strain because the free wall is not affected by septal dyskinesia or pacemaker or bundle branch block. For me, this value is a little more, a little bit more accurate than the free wall, right ventricular free wall strain. What, why the strain value is with minus, not like the ejection fraction, because I have said the, uh, the strain value measures the shortening of the muscle. When the muscle shortens from, for example, 10 centimeter to eight centimeter, it has shortened by minus 20%. This is shortening. It becomes smaller. Uh, that is why we have uh, values with minus in strain. Here we have the strain values. Here we have a free wall strain of minus 28. Here we can see the strain values of the right ventricular free wall. Here at the base is minus 30 percent. The, the shortening of the right ventricular uh, free wall is most at the base become less at the mid ventricle, minus 28, and to uh, more, uh, and it decreases more at the apex, minus uh, 23%. That was uh, right ventricular free wall strain. Normal value of right ventricular strain is minus 25%. More normal is less. Minus 25 is normal, minus 30 is normal. When the strain, uh, for example, minus 15, then uh, that means that the strain is uh, reduced. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.